More now from my interview with former Secretary of State and National Security Advisor Condoleezza Rice. As I've shown you already this week, President Bush took his focus off Osama bin Laden only five months after 9-11. Deep in my heart, I know the man's on the run if he's alive at all. And uh, I, I uh, you know, I, who knows if he's hiding in some cave or not. I don't know where he is. Nor, you know, I just don't spend that much time on him. But I truly am not that concerned about him. The Bush focus shifted to Iraq. And as we all now know, mistakes were made. Huge mistakes. As we look back and reflect on September 11th today, uh, I want to quote something that President Bush said about September 11th, the lesson of September 11th. He said this repeatedly. It became boilerplate in the speeches. September the 11th taught us a lesson I will never forget, and America must never forget. America must confront threats before they fully materialize. My administration looked at the facts and the history and looked at the intelligence in Iraq, and we saw a threat. He's clearly saying that September 11th is the reason he looked at Iraq differently and saw a threat there. Yeah, are you surprised by that? Yes. Uh, after because, September, after because September Iraq 11th. Because Iraq had nothing to do with September after 11th. After September 11th, of course you look at threats differently. Your country's just been attacked. You know that you cannot allow threats to materialize. Do you know how many times I've but been asked... there was like, nothing uh, Lawrence, in the you, threat Lawrence, that Iraq presented Lawrence, that was in any way related to us in Lawrence, September 11th. we can end this interview right now, if you don't want me to finish my, my point. Thank you. If one looks at what happened to us on September 11th, we didn't connect the dots. There was a threat materializing that we didn't respond to. Saddam Hussein had been a threat from the time that he invaded Iran in the late 1980s through the 1991 when in fact he went into Kuwait dragging us into war. We thought he had reconstituted his weapons of mass destruction. And in a context in which terrorism and weapons of mass destruction was a nexus that we could not allow, we decided that this was a threat that had to be dealt with. 40,000 casualties later in Iraq, 4,400 military, American military deaths in Iraq later. Would you say that is the single biggest miscalculation that the Bush administration made, that, Osama, that uh, Saddam Hussein had weapons of mass destruction and must be stopped by those military men who went in there and found no weapons of mass Sada destruction? Saddam Hussein was a threat. He had used weapons of but mass destruction. But we now destruction. know he wasn't this a threat. This was not... Lawrence, are we going to do this with my answers or right. with your commentary? Uh, we had not um, focused on the fact, you have not focused on the fact, that Saddam Hussein had been a threat to the United States of America, to the Middle East, since he invaded Iran. Now, we made the wrong call then, and we supported him against Iran. He then became a more monstrous threat. After 1991, shooting at our aircraft uh, in the no-fly zone that was supposed to be keeping his air force on the ground, trying to reconstitute his uh, weapons of mass destruction, breaking out of the sanctions through the scandalous oil for food program. Yes, he was a threat. With or without mature weapons of mass destruction, he was a threat. And nothing of value is ever won without sacrifice. Of course, the lives lost will never be brought back. But in Iraq, that is not a threat to invade its neighbors, not a threat to reconstitute its weapons of mass destruction, not a threat to pay, to pay a Palestinian terrorist uh, as suicide bombers. That's going to be a better Iraq and a better Middle East. And so, in fact, um, I think that what we did in Iraq will be demonstrated by history to be an important part, an important pillar of a new Middle East. Well, I think history demonstrates that Iraq presented absolutely no threat to the United States whatsoever. And well, that would, be, that would be a surprise okay. to the 16 Security Council resolutions that called him a threat to international peace and Using security. Information that, that would be was a surprise. Not true. That would be a surprise. No, no, no. That was on the basis of his invasion of Kuwait and the weapons of mass destruction that were found there in 1991. The weapons inspectors who could not do their jobs and so left in 1998. The attack by President Clinton in 1998 to try to bomb those sites. It would be a surprise to the Kurds who he gassed 
and the, Ira the Iranians who he gassed and the people in the south of his country who he gassed, it would be a surprise to the CIA that considered him a massive threat to the to international peace and security. I think he was a threat so, to Kuwait. So I think you, he was a threat to well, the Kurds. You know, I do not think Lawrence he was a threat to Lawrence, New Yorkers. Lawrence, do you think you have, he was a threat to Lawrence, New Yorkers? You, you obviously have a very different view than the UN Security Council. Do you you think obviously he was have the a very same different view. To New Yorkers you obviously have a very different was? you obviously have a very different view than those people who were flying the no fly zones, uh, like the soldier who's in my class at Stanford who was shot at by Saddam Hussein. So you may not view him as a threat. Uh, most of the world did. Uh, most of the world didn't, which is why we couldn't assemble the coalition that we would have liked how, to assemble um, Lawrence, to go in there. You, how many countries? Uh, let's, no, no, no. Let's I have a question for you. No, I have rant. a question for you. To I have a question war. for you. How many countries you, fought in the coalition? We, we don't have enough time no, to no, review no. all that you, history. You've just made a charge. I would like to review Lawrence, your, you've just made a charge. Say, your, no. your feelings about things you said ramping up to the no, war. No, not until... The threat of a mushroom we're cloud not going there. from Saddam Hussein, you now know was completely false. You Do know you what? regret saying that? Do you know what? Would you take that back if you could? You know what? You've just made a false statement. You said we couldn't assemble a coalition. How many countries fought in the coalition actually in fought Iraq. and had casualties? Uh, how many actually countries fought? actually, yeah, how many? Maybe a half a dozen actually fought. Oh, I see. So the Georgians who went there and the Japanese actually who went there Actually had soldiers and others, firing weapons on the ground? This was not part of the coalition. The people who, the British and the Australians and the Poles and all of those who, the Canadians, all of those who uh, ultimately were in Iraq, these were not part of the coalition. Yes, they were. Yeah. So now, your statement was just false. about the mushroom cloud that you were completely wrong about, would you say that was possibly the single worst misstatement by a national security advisor publicly? I said that we could not afford to have it be a mushroom cloud. Where that did told you think us, that mushroom cloud would Lawrence, be? you have a bad habit with your guests. You never let them answer a question. Go ahead. Where would the Thank mushroom you. cloud be? The question was, had Saddam Hussein actually reconstituted his nuclear weapons, or was he trying to? And if you look at the intelligence reporting at the time, it said that he could possibly reconstitute that nuclear capability within a year with foreign assistance, and that he was trying to do it. But we what I said, all that was wrong. What I said, he couldn't have reconstituted Lawrence, anything in a year. We know, the, why recite things that we know were wrong and have been proven wrong? Because what you know today can affect what you do tomorrow, but what you know today cannot affect what you did yesterday. It so at the time, we didn't know that he had not reconstituted. The intelligence said he was reconstituting, that he was reconstituting his nuclear program, he had reconstituted his biological and chemical program, he was shooting at our aircraft, he was a threat to international peace and security, he'd been sanctioned by the UN 17 times on that course, he was a threat. The aluminum tubes that you said were used exclusively, exclusively for nuclear weapons obviously were not. They were the kind of tubes that were used for rockets. That kind of, that when you say that intelligence indicated that, the, your White House was using intelligence incorrectly. You were misstating what the intelligence actually was. Lawrence, we can do this one way or another, all right? You can let me answer your questions, or you talk can, about the or you can make rhetorical statements. Let's talk about the aluminum tubes that you were so wrong about. That is, that's, that's one of those things you like to use as an indication of what the intelligence was telling you, but the White House was misinterpreting the intelligence. No, 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 no. The, the, this was not the White House misinterpreting anything. The director of the CIA briefed the Congress that those aluminum tubes were most likely that's for nuclear you capability. You said and exclusively. We believed that the nuclear tube, that the tubes, given Saddam Hussein's history, given the long trail of what he was trying to acquire, were for nuclear weapons. Now, you are right. The intelligence turned out to have been wrong. But you know, you don't get to get up in the morning and say, you know, my intelligence might be wrong. You have to act on the intelligence that you have. And that's the intelligence that we had at the time. When you look at what we now are calling the Arab Spring and you look at these uprisings against these dictators in the region, would it have been better now, knowing what we all know now, would it have been better to wait 
and let history catch up with Saddam Hussein in Iraq. Would Saddam, we, do you think we might Saddam have Hussein, a similar we, uprising in Saddam Iraq Saddam Hussein today? was a threat, and we dealt with the threat. We didn't go to Iraq to bring democracy any more that dealing with Adolf Hitler was to bring democracy to Germany. But once there, we felt that we had to help the Iraqi people get to democracy. And it's simply ill-informed and ahistorical to suggest that a dictator as brutal as Saddam Hussein would have allowed an Arab uprising in his country. You're looking at a dictator in Syria put down an uprising. You're looking at a dictator in Libya who has tried to put down an uprising. And if you want to talk about a humanitarian disaster, why did we go into Libya? Because he was about to mow down his own people. He was going to uh, eliminate his own people. He was going to commit genocide against his own people. Saddam Hussein committed chemical warfare against his own people. And I'd really like to have an answer from those who say it was a good thing to intervene in a humanitarian uh, way in Libya because Gaddafi was killing massive numbers of civilians. Saddam Hussein put 400,000 people in mass graves. He used chemical weapons against Kurds and Shia. If that wasn't a humanitarian reason to intervene, quite apart from the security reasons, I really think people have a lot of explaining to do. But you would grant the style of intervention in Libya and Iraq is totally different. Well, yes, because uh, Libya and uh, Muammar Gaddafi are thankfully not Saddam Hussein. But if you think for one minute that you are going to be able to take Saddam Hussein down by mass protests in the streets, then you're clearly ill-informed. We'll never know. Dr. Rest, uh, thank you. Yeah, you're right. We'll never know. But I, I would have to say anybody who thinks that that's going to happen would have to be pretty ill-informed. That'll be the last word. Dr. Rest, thank, thank you. you very, very much for you're joining. You're quite welcome. Thank you. Thank you.